I had been discussing phonons, uh, the collective oscillation of atoms and molecules in a crystalline solid. Uh, so far I have gone in the discussion how to measure the phonon dispersion relations in a material and that deals with uh, single crystal samples. Uh, today I will go ahead and I will talk about uh, phonon density of state measurements which is done with powder samples because powder samples are more easily available and for many physical phenomena density of states uh, is good enough to give us an answer. Then I will stop dealing with phonons and I will go into quasi-elastic neutron scattering for stochastic motions. So I will discuss two different kinds of motions. Phonons were collective oscillations, periodic and their time correlations are known. So this is a coherent effect. So like when we found out crystallographic structure using coherent neutron scattering cross section, phonon dispersion relations are also found out using coherent scattering cross section. Whereas quasi-elastic neutron scattering is for stochastic motions. Stochastic means statistical motions. So they are more in the realm of uh, uh, diffusion. When a molecule diffuses statistically in a liquid or even in some geometrical confinements. So for single crystals we get information about omega versus q and it is a involved process as I discussed with you so far. This is what are the dispersion relations even longitudinal and transverse acoustic modes, optic modes and they have to be found out inside the first Brillouin zone and how we can do the measurements with the choice of G and Q for a single crystal. I have discussed these issues and actually towards the end of the previous talk I had shown you results of measurements on a zircon crystal. A zircon is a constituent of the earth's minerals and I showed you that it needs an involved calculation of the phonon dispersion relations in which we also need to use group theoretical considerations where various group theoretical classes or representations are measured at different G and Q values. Now from there we go into polycrystalline sample. Uh, polycrystalline samples are easier to get, these are powder samples. So they provide phonon density of states and we can work with a sample typically about 10 cc volume. Now what do we mean by density of states? That is the number of states we have between omega and omega plus d omega. So omega to omega plus d omega. I will just quickly remind you about what we did in your master's degree positively. Suppose I have a crystal which is having dimensions L. L is quite large, a very large dimension. So for that I know quantum mechanics demands that in one dimension I have gap between the two k, value, k values, two k values twice pi by L because there should be a stationary wave inside the, inside the sample and if I consider three directions x, y, z, x, y, z then the volume twice pi by L Q will have one allowed k values. So then the density will be L Q by one upon this twice pi Q. So this goes to V by 8 
pi cube this is the density in density in k space please remember here i drew it in a real space but this is the density in k space so in kx ky kz direction if i talk about a sample of size l then in a unit volume in a unit volume it will be l cube by twice pi cube is a density because twice pi by l is the volume in which we have got one allowed k value so if i make it into a volume then twice pi by l whole cube will give me one vol one k values k value in the k space the density is one upon that which is l cube by twice pi cube v by 8 pi cube and i take the example of i know that in the lower limit when omega and k are linear omega is equal to vk so in that case what i need to find out one is that in the k space if i consider a sphere of radius k it has got a volume of 4 pi by 3 k cube this is the volume and in this volume how many allowed k values will be there 4 sorry 4 pi by 3 k cube into v by 8 pi cube because this is the density this is the volume so this is the number of omega values now i can substitute from this relationship between omega and k that k is equal to omega by v this is the velocity of the wave like here it is sound velocity when i talk about the k equal to zero limit in case of phonons i'm just giving a simple example then it becomes then n omega will be equal to 4 pi by 3 k cube will be omega q by v q into v by 8 8 pi q this v is volume of the sample and this v is the velocity of the wave so then we know that n omega d omega that is the number will be given by omega cube becomes 2 omega square so 4 pi by 3 2 omega 3 omega square 3 omega square by v q to v by 8 pi q so it goes as omega square this is a n omega d omega in which in a dispersionless linear relationship this is the density of states which goes as omega square and we know this is true for free particles also so n omega d omega is called omega square d omega this is my relationship now this is in case of a simple case as i told this is a device solid in which it is goes as omega square the density of states but in actual crystalline solids this relationship is not so simple so here as i wrote d omega equal to v omega square by twice pi square v cube from that relationship so and it gives me my omega square relationship and the internal energy is given as an integration over the density of states numbers present number of particles phonons present at that density of states at the frequency omega temperature t and d omega that gives me internal energy of the system but in reality this density is of in case of real solid we have density of states which might look different and actually we need to measure the density of states which i will show you shortly in case of phonons to find out the internal energy for example if i know the internal energy i can find out the specific heat which is 
important for many of the phase transitions from du by dt. So now one thing is that I know that I have to measure still at various q values. Now for large momentum transfer when q is greater than twice pi by r where r is the interparticle distance then I can make an approximation that the relative motions are incoherent. This will be clear if I make a diagram. As you remember that earlier also I had showed you that if this is a reciprocal lattice, reciprocal lattice, reciprocal lattice, then my Q and small q together form equal to G because of the conservation relation equal to G we stated earlier. Now if Q is large enough, now there are the delta Q or DQ around Q plus minus DQ, DQ is around few percent, few percent. If Q is large enough, then the resolution ellipsoid as I showed you earlier allows contribution from various Q values. So I am just trying to draw it for you. This is a reciprocal. So it can be Q, this Q, then it is this G, this G value, this point, or it can be Q, this Q, so Q1, Q2, it can be this Q, bringing in this G1, so G1, G2, G3. So basically, now I am getting host of Q values that are contributing to my Q. So I am getting an sum over all Qs and in the process, because this each Q talks about a displacement in case of phonons, each Q talks about a displacement. So this is a longitudinal acoustic phonon, there is a optic phonon. Every Q values, whenever I talk about a phonon, every Q value corresponds when I touch a dispersion curve, a certain displacement for the atoms or one atom. It is for the atoms here, a pattern of displacement for the atoms which is coherent. But now, if so many Qs are contributing to my Q measurements, then it is a sort of averaging over all the Q values and now I can consider that each atom, this is a reciprocal lattice, but each atom is moving incoherently. That means their motions, I can just simply take the motion of a particular atom without bothering about the correlation with other atoms. So this is known as incoherent approximation approximation to coherent phonon scattering. So this is I am imposing and correctly so because I have got a Q which is large enough so that the delta DQI encircles so many Q values and all the Q values added together, each Q corresponds to a displacement for one particular atom will give a displacement which I consider the total displacement of that particular atom coming from all the phonon branches, all the phonon branches and they are adding up incoherently. Actually earlier also we had done it. If you remember in case of Debye-Waller factor, we talk, talked about a displacement U around R. I talked about R U plus R T in case of debye waller factor and ultimately we talked when I did it that uh, U and R T was G dot R was G R cos theta and then we found out that square of it came and R square came out to be uh, this came out to be not R square cos theta cos square theta came while calculating the de Waller factor, uh, cos square, sorry, cos square theta comes and we showed that 
if it is spherically isotropic then cos square theta comes out to be cos square theta average value comes out to be one third that is very easy to show from the integration cos square theta d theta 0 to pi when you find out the solid angle average of cos square theta so it came one third g square or q square u square in general if i am talking about any value in q space so this we got in d valor factor in that case also we assume that each atom is moving independently here starting with phonons and then playing with the q length you find that is sufficiently large q values when sufficiently large means when the resolution in q involves adding up of many many branches then that allows me to consider the movement of each and every atom in the lattice as independent though they are actually hidden after the coherent coherence between the atoms in the lattice when we calculate the phonons but uh, these phonons themselves at large q for each atom they add up and give me a displacement which is quasi independent and I can treat them as independent so now since I am talking about independent atom motions so earlier if you remember in phonons my B was B coherent only I always use B coherent I will come to it the expression that I did B coherent but now since the motions are incoherent so incoherent scattering cross section also will come in if you remember B coherent is basically average of B in a lattice and B incoherent was B square B sorry as I showed you that B square was B square average sorry B square average minus B average square this was the B incoherent square and now instead of using only B coherent because I am assuming that uh, the motions are incoherent and independent of each other my b square will comprise b coherent square plus b incoherent square so i get a boost for this and now i can put this in my expression and i can get the density of states so this i express sometimes back that for many macroscopic thermal information we don't need the details of phonon dispersion but an average information like density of states will be sufficient so now why, how do i get the density of states for phonons I took a simple example where phonons at k going to 0 as limit omega is equal to vk dispersionless uh, uh, phonon density of dispersionless phonon curve that gave me as omega square uh, I, uh, g omega proportional to omega square now let me go back to what I showed you earlier this is a phonon single phonon coherent scattering law scattering law means it will be scattering amplitude and square of that so this has a structure structure factor part then as i explained to earlier there is a population factor which tells you that whether it is a neutron energy gain or energy loss in case of energy loss it is n omega plus half plus half n omega plus 1 in case of energy gain it is half minus half so it is n omega h cross omega then we had a momentum transfer and an energy transfer now here the structure factor was it was coherent b k coherent this is the displacement part it is the q is the momentum vector transfer for the experiment not phonon wave vector momentum vector transfer 
this is the phonon wave vector so this displacement is for the kth atom contributed by jth branch at momentum vector q let me be little clear about it so when i talk about xi suppose this is suppose this is a i am just talking about the acoustic branches it is longitudinal this is pi by a this is longitudinal this is transverse now if i consider this one then i know a displacement pattern for all the atom will be given so if i consider a single cell then i know what is the kth atom and what is its displacement now for this transverse phonon i know also that there will be a amplitude in this direction and for the same kth atom coming from this branch i will have one motion so i have one motion in this direction one motion in the normal direction considering a longitudinal and the transverse phonon which is contributing to the displacement of the kth atom that is what i am calling xi and the dot product of that with q the momentum transfer weighted by the mass of that particular atom so if there is a atom and a b atom if k atom is the b atom then the mass of that b atom is there after that you have very simple terms like this is a de bivalent factor and this is a structure factor for the incoherent approximation i am considering each atom is acting independently so i need to square this so then this will go away this will be minus 2 wq now q dot xi i showed you just now it is 1/3 q square xi square for the by the same logic by which i did it for calculations in de bivalent factor so it will be so qi square comes squaring bk square comes here i have weighted it against the average b square value this bk square will include will include bk coherent square plus bk incoherent square so now under incoherent approximation because i am considering the motion of the particles are independent of each other so i have got the total cross section that's what i have written here this is not coherent here up to this point it was coherent but once i have taken the incoherent approximation my fjq will have bk total or bk square total when i square them this is here it will be squared when i do incoherent scattering law and then i have the density of states here what is the density of states if you see here q square i have absorbed here this gk will have xi again k the atom and its contribution to its motion from the jth branch at the phonon wave vector q again i'll repeat k the atom contribution to its motion by the jth branch jth branch jth branch at wave vector q is xi q j k and square and add that means if there are say i have two transverse phonons and one longitudinal phonon say the displacements will be x square plus y square plus z square and this i have to do for all the branches for all the branches when i add them up keeping the energy conservation fix that means the displacements only when we touch one of the phonon branches and i have to add up over all the momentum vectors when i do that then what i get is a k atom for the k atom the density of states and now if i add up over all the atoms then i what i get is actually neutron weighted density of states which is weighted by the scattering cross section of that atom 4 pi bk square by mk and the weighted by the mass and then it is gk omega which i get from the displacement of all these so i have to do an experiment where 
I do experiments at large number of queues, large number of large number of queue values with vector transfer, and then I will should cover all the branches, and I will get g of omega from the experimental measurement. So this is what. So now it is an easier experiment. I have given the same thing in terms of an ensemble average of s q omega. Its average is over omega here. And so our Q, so they are similar, same. But I like to show you this because here it is very evident that you get G K omega from your. Uh, I mean, I don't know what I will get is the sum of G K omega in my experiment. Or rather, I will get G N omega in my experiment. So, phonon density of states I mentioned you in the polycrystalline sample. I will do. I will use this, and this is the. But what we measure experimentally, you can see, dispersion relation is like this. But when you talk about phonon density of states, there is no Q dependence because, as I told you, I have done measurements at many Q values. There is an averaging over all the phonon wave vectors because of the dQ values, and then when I add up, I get this phonon density of states as a function of omega. I hope it's clear to you. Because there is a band gap here between the not band gap a gap in omega spectrum between the sorry, between the say acoustic and optic modes. So what you get if I plot g omega versus omega, it looks somewhat like this. So this is that gap. This gap, it is just shown in a Papandreou reaction. But basically, G omega gives me density of states. That means d omega by d k for the entire sample. Now there is a summation over all the phonon branches. So it is only a function of omega, as I showed you earlier. And this is what we can measure. It's an easier measurement because summation of one Q and Q in a polycrystalline sample, the Q is not defined because all possible Qs are there. Unlike a single crystal, uh, there is nothing like orienting the crystal in a certain direction. So I have got an average over all the Qs, and I do an experiment over large number of momentum vector transfers, and I get neutron weighted. Dispersion relation, which I mentioned here. So, how does it look like? Well, this is what the experiment is, and I am showed you. This is how the data will look like. Let me just show some data. Uh, earlier, I had shown you this measurement. This is on zircon. You can see this involved group theoretical calculations to find out which class will be measured in an experiment. And the corresponding g values earlier I listed out for all these measurement. Though it is the phonon in q00 direction, but various branches were measured in different experiments. Now for the same, when I do the density of states, it's a much simpler data. You can see, and this is what we found uh, find that the fit between the experimental data, the red dots. And the calculated values. This feeds, unlike uh, your diffraction data, this is considered a good fit. I mean, this is a, it's an ethical question regarding how good is a fit. But in case of phonon density of states, this is considered as a good fit. If you do such experiment, this will be considered good. And from here. I can get information about various uh, macroscopic thermodynamic quantities like specific heat and others. So this is uh, one of the measurements done at Dhruva in uh, on density of states. But here you don't have Q dependent data. Q averaged out experiments done only as a function of energy transfer. So it's easier to do carry out and we get better intensity. Now, now this is another one. 
it, it is nickel silicon and nickel germanium and uh, this is what uh, again i'm showing you this is the calculated value and these are the experimental data this peak doesn't represent very well but this peak reasonably represented i would say here the issue is that one big problem is this when i am doing let us say i am writing uh, g n omega as here you can see i have got e to the power minus 2 w k q that means the kth atom and its value of the de bevelopment factor at momentum transfer q but here in this expression you can see i am putting a w q when it is an average on q square but w q remains same whereas you can see that and this is neutron weighted density of state for all the atoms over here the thing is that in a lattice a heavier atom will uh, have smaller amplitude of motion compared to a lighter atom so this is an average w key i am talking about average average and this is an average which i am using here but actually it is not correct because different atoms will have different amplitudes of movement and i am when i am doing density of states i am considering an average w of q so this is one source as i am telling you source of error in our density of states calculation also the q as i told you earlier the q has to be the q has to be q is large q is large because then dq adds up over many q small q values as i showed you in the drawing here many q values but uh, fact is that if i go to very large qs then again my de bevelopment factor will kill the intensity because de bevelopment factor shows that the intensity decreases with q so again i have to take an optimal q optimal q it is large enough to work with incoherent approximation but not so large that uh, de bevelopment factor kills my intensity so these are the things uh, uh, which has to be taken care of and this is the kind of data that we get experimentally so i think here i will call it a stop for discussion on phonons we have discussed the phonon dispersion relations and their measurements and phonon density of states that we can measure using polycrystalline samples and uh, easier experiments so the phonons the collective motions has stopped here and the next part i will go on to quasi elastic neutron scattering for stochastic motions